I'm not wearing my journal today. It's just too hot here in Texas. However, I'm still doing Oktoberfest topics and today's topic are gingerbread hearts. This is a very small version. Um, we're doing bigger ones today and I will show you how to bake them and I will also tell you the secret of how to eat them because that's not a no-brainer. <music> step I will measure my first ingredients and you see I put my um, pot on the scale so I do not have any additional um, things that I need to wash like cups or something and I will start with 300 gram of honey A little more. Okay. And then I put my scale back on tar and measure 150 gram of sugar. And I will also need 100 gram of butter, although today I'm not using butter to be honest, I'm using something that's called imperial, it seems to be some sort of margarine, it says um, perfect for baking, let's just believe that. My husband's cholesterol um, has been a little bit too high in the last checkup, so since he's a keeper I try to keep him alive and I settle for margarine now more often than for butter. I will put this on the stove and uh, heat it, but I will not bring it to a boil. So now I will measure 500 gram of flour. So add two tablespoons of cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder. Next, I will add some baking powder. I will use two and about a half of the baking powder also. A little bit of cinnamon and some dried um, lemon zest. You can also use some fresh lemon zest. I just have this still and I'd, I want to use it before it goes bad. Um, also I need a little bit of salt. and the yolk of an egg. So and if you dare, you can keep the egg white for the frosting later. If you are concerned about um, infections, then you can use something else. I will come to that later. So now I simply add the honey sugar butter mixture and this is all I need to make the dough. Pretty simple, right? So there we go and stirring. Look 
looks still very sticky and I think I will add a little more of the flour. Just a little bit. Okay. And next I will put it in some wax paper and put it in the fridge to cool a little bit. This is quite sticky. And not so easy to get out, but later you will notice that this is probably, probably the smoothest dough that you've ever had. Okay, here we go. Let's give it a short need because I just noticed there are still some areas not so good integrated in the dough. Alright. Completely wrap it and I will put it in the fridge for about an hour. So this dough has rested for a while and um, I want to roll it now. I think I start with just half of it and um, give it a quick short knead and it's a really very soft very nice dough very easy to work with it's not as st sticky as it was before I had it in the fridge it's basically like play-doh very nice Let me roll this. And in case that you wonder what happened to my arm here, um, some of you might have seen my post about the tomato sauce, the spaghetti sauce that I made recently. I had a little accident when I was doing that. I got really burned badly on my arm. Luckily I had some aloe vera in my garden and could treat it immediately. However, there's still this red mark on my arm and it might stay there for a while. But don't worry, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's just still there. Okay, just a little more. That should be enough. And um, I do have heart shaped cookie cutters, but they are too small to make a real German gingerbread. So I will just use this shape that I printed on my printer and cut out. And I'll take one of my knives and just go along the outer edge just like this
making sure that I can really cut this out. Here we go. Very nice. And I have prepared my baking sheet with some baking paper and I put my heart shape on this here. And since there's space for some more, I will just go and make some more of these hearts. I will now bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 minutes. Though 12 minutes is like a rough estimate it always depends on how thick your dough is and um, how large your gingerbread hearts are so now here's my first batch of hearts and i will let them cool completely before i can decorate them so as you can see i add some holes into the dough that is still soft while it's cooling and this way I can later put a ribbon through these holes so we can put it around our neck. So now it's time to decorate our gingerbread hearts and usually in Germany this decoration uh, is a writing with the icing that is some sort of love message like darling or I love you or sweetheart something like that uh, of course in German with a Bavarian twist um, it's up to you what you want to write on your gingerbread um, hearts it can be a love message of course it can also be something completely different uh, it can be the the name of your favorite football team or something um, you come up with something that you like I will make some suggestion when I do this video and um, if you want to have some German messages and write them on that then you can find some suggestions on my blog website www.mygerman.recipes so the gingerbread hearts are cool now and I'm starting to decorate them I could use the egg white that I had from the dough um, however I decided to go with some meringue powder and I used two tablespoons of that powder with two tablespoons of water and I mix this And this is as much as one egg white. And you can see this on the package. So it says uh, two tablespoons meringue and two tablespoons of water equal one egg white. So and I now will mix this with two cups or 200 gram of powdered sugar. needs a little bit more water but be very careful when you add water a little water makes a big change here
and this is still a little bit too dense since I want to pipe it I will have to make it a little bit more fluid Alright, this looks good to me already and I will take some of it and fill it in here. And I will add some blue color. I have some dark blue here. Very beautiful. And usually the colors become more intense when the frosting or when the icing has dried. So I'm not using too much of the blue. Because I want it to be some sort of middle blue, not too dark. Okay, and I have already prepared my piping bag and I'm using this, um, is there a number on it? Yes, but I cannot read it. I'll tell you later. Um, however, I will fill the icing into the piping bag. And now I can start to decorate my first heart. I'll make some space here. And I will now make this kind of wave shape. Okay. And I move this aside and decorate the next part. continue to decorate this and um, write something on it but I also want to show you something else. So in the past when I made some gingerbread hearts I used to have some of the frosting or icing left over and I just randomly made some, some shapes on some um, parchment paper and let it dry. So I have some prepared um, decoration parts for my gingerbread heart that I just can simply now glue on 
like this, which makes my job a little easier and adds more color to my hearts without making too many different colors of the icing. So I think you can see what I'm going for. And I will just continue and make some more decorations and make one of the smaller ones here. And I will take another piping bag with just a round tip. And I want to use this to have some white writing on my heart. Now my gingerbread heart is finished. It even has a band that I can use to hang it around my neck. Usually they are um, wrapped in plastic so you can still eat them. But the problem with eating them actually is not if they are wrapped or not. The problem with eating is that while the frosting or the icing is um, getting hard, the gingerbread heart also is getting very very hard and whether you bake them yourself or buy them they are really hard and um, most people assume that they are just not for eating but they are actually you just need to know how to get them soft again and that's very easy all you need is like a tin and you put it in there and you add a slice of fresh bread and um, close the lid and leave it there for about three days and after three days you can just take it off and um, take it out of the tin and you will notice that your gingerbread heart is super soft and eatable now. Enjoy!